Okay, so the first item on the checklist are labels. So you cannot go into manufacturing until you have your labels ready. And that doesn't mean just knowing what you want, it means actually having your labels made in a bulk fashion and ready to be applied to your clothes. There's a few things about labels there are, um, that are legal. You have to follow legal guidelines. Um, some things about labels like care and content and country of origin and sizing info, those things have to be in your label in a certain fashion in order for it to be a legal garment. Um, so those are things that have to be thought about. How do you want to prepare them? How do you want to put them into your garment? And then of course you should be thinking about your branding. And there's, there's so many options on labels of, and combinations of how you can do it. You can do all of your information into one label, kind of like I've shown here um, in the first picture has the brand name, it has the care and content, it has the size, and it has the country of origin. Um, and there's probably, well actually the care is probably on the flip side. So that's one way you can put all of your information into one label. Um, you know, on the bottom here, I've got another way to like show branding. So this is an external label. This one is actually called a heat transfer label. Um, and so that's one way you can put branding inside your garment or on the outside. And there's patch labels, there's embroidery, there's just so many different ways you can label your garment in many different places. Um, you know, so you have to really think about how you want it to be labeled and make sure that your labels are actually exist and have been tested on your samples and are ready to go in order to be manufactured. Okay, so we have got item number two of the checklist. So this is the second thing you will need before you can manufacture your clothing line. And it is colorways. Um, colorways is, is, can be kind of confusing. So I'm going to describe it as best as I can. So the definition that we give it is the each unique combination of colors in which a style will be manufactured. So I have some diagrams down here below. And example A right here, these two dresses, the blue and the green one on the top, this is the same style because it's the exact same dress, the exact same cut, it's the exact same fabrics in the same locations. So it is called a style but then you have to define what your colorways are gonna be. So in this style, there's a blue pink colorway and a green yellow colorway. So it's important that you define what colorways you're going to offer before you manufacture and that you've discussed them with your factory and you've discussed thread color and all the details per colorway. Um, so I'm gonna go through example A a little bit more in depth. So, in example A, the body of the fabric is blue. It is a cotton, as the chart shows us on the side here. The flower and the trim of the fabric, or of the dress, is a bamboo. So over here in colorway two, the green yellow colorway, it's the same thing. The body is cotton, the flower and trim are bamboo. So that is, that's okay. That's one style and two different colorways because the fabrics are in the same location. One thing we find a lot with newer designers is mixing up the fabrics into different locations, which actually constitutes as a, a new style number. So and an incorrect use of colorways would be example B, where the body is cotton and on the blue one and the pink rose and the trim are bamboo. On colorway two, they have them flipped. So the body is bamboo, and the flower and trim are cotton. So in that case, those are two separate styles because the fabrics are in different locations, so they would not, you wouldn't call it the same style with different colorways. All right, so I'm gonna be talking about items three and four. 
kind of together. So three and four are fabrics and trims. So of course, before you can manufacture, you need enough fabric and you need enough trim. Um, so the important information that you will need is the yield of fabric and trim. And what that means is the amount of fabric or trims that you need per garment. So in the chart below, um, we have a hypothetical situation where a client would like to place an order for 100 shirts. And down below, we have what that would look like and how much fabric they would need. So this shirt has two fabrics in it. It has a fabric A and a fabric B. It has elastic and button. So that's everything that's, that it takes to make that garment. So fabric A, the yield, is one yard. So that means it takes one yard of fabric per, sh per shirt to make that shirt in, in fabric A. Fabric B also has a one yard yield. So this shirt has one yard of fabric A and one yard of fabric B. Each shirt has a half yard of elastic in it and each shirt has two buttons. Um, this column is talking about where they're placed. Um, and then the order quantity, so the, how many shirts we're going to be making. We always add 10% for you know, wastage, um, a lot of times there's fabric flaws, you know, things like that. So we add 10% so we don't run out of fabric. And so if you kind of do the math here, you see one yard, a fabric A is needed to make one shirt. There's 100 shirts that we want to make. We want to add 10%. So the total yards needed for fabric A is 110 yards. So that's what would need to be ordered and sent to the factory. The same thing for fabric B. In elastic, it's a half yard per. We add the 10%, so it comes out to 55 yards of elastic. Two buttons, so we do 220 buttons adding that 10% on. So that, that is how you figure out how, how much to order. Um, and again, it's very, very important, essential, that you have enough fabric and trim for your items to be manufactured. This diagram over here on the right is just a quick diagram showing you what a marker cut file looks like. So in this instance, we would lay several layers of fabric under this marker cut file and we would cut the garment out. Um, and this just helps us figure out the yield. So however many, however many bodies are in here and then we measure the yard length and then we divide it by that number and average it out. So that's how you come up with your yield. Okay, um, a little bit more about fabrics and trims. So just some key terms in the industry. If you are working with fabric and trim vendors to help you, help you use the right terminology, help you have the right vocab, help, which will help them take you more seriously. Um, so fabric and trims are also known as raw goods or raw materials. Um, one thing that's very important is get your fabric and trims from a wholesaler and get them on rolls if at all possible. Um, if you go to a retailer and you get fabric on bolts, then it becomes infinitely more difficult for the manufacturer to work with that fabric and to produce your goods, which will also raise your price. And before you order your bulk goods, which is a, this is another big mistake I see new designers make, is please approve your fabric and trims in your garment before you order the bulk goods. Okay, so here I talk a little bit about how fabric and trim vendors expect a level of experience and knowledge in their clients. They can really sniff out people that are new to the industry and many times they just don't have time to help them properly, so you might not get the service that you're hoping for. So just you know, having a little bit of um, keywords and terms we're going to share below might help you. Um, again, you, or you know, we are here too to help you source if you do need help in sourcing fabrics and trims. That is a service we offer. 
Um, but if you'd like to go and do it on your own, some of the words you need to know are yield, which we talked about. Um, you definitely, at a rudimentary level, need to know if your fabric is a knit or woven, at least have that um, concept. If you know the weight of your fabric, that's going to be even better. Um, most fabrics are weighed per metered square or per yard square. Um, you can send your fabric to a lab to have it tested for weight. We also do have a way to test it for weight in our facilities. You're going to need to know your fiber content. Um, you know exactly what percentage is rayon or modal or polyester or lycra, that kind of thing. And then uh, another word that you're going to need to get familiar with are lab dips. And lab dips are the the swatches that you will receive if you're offering different colors in your fabric. So you're going to want to receive lab dips from the factory from the fabric vendor. They will there'll be little color swatches and you're going to have to approve the colors from those lab dips and that's sort of your agreement with the fabric vendor that yep that's the blue that I want or the green that I want and then you would order your bulk goods. Okay, so the fifth item that is extremely important before going into manufacturing is to have an approved sample. And what do we mean by approved sample? It means the factory that's going to produce your goods needs to make a sample that is exactly, exactly to the specifications of the final product. So some of the things that that approved sample should include are, it should be in the absolutely exact final fabric. It should have the exact trims that you're going to use, no substitutions. It should be approved in all sizes. It should have the final labels included in it. And it should have any artwork, screens, embroideries, embellishments, anything additional that's going to be on your final production. So the key is, is, is it should really look exactly like you want it to look when production gets shipped to you. If you have any, anything you're adding later, um, you know, let's say you're ready for manufacturing, but you don't have your heat transfer labels or your brand labels, or you don't have the right grommets or things like that. Um, if you have substitutions on that sample, what we found so many times can happen is, is things will go wrong. The grommets won't work, they'll fall out, or um, the placement of the heat transfer, you told them where to place it, but they didn't quite understand, and it was placed way too high, or something like that. So we really think it's very important to have the approved sample be absolutely exact with every little detail. Um, and it just it eliminates tons of issues when you go into manufacturing. All right, so the sixth item are your final patterns. So some people, you know, don't know what we mean by patterns. So when we say pattern, what we mean, it's the shapes that are cut out of the fabric that get sewn together to create your garment. So we do all of ours digitally. Um, but every single pattern is unique to every single garment. So it's, it's impossible to make a garment without a pattern to, that can be cut out, especially if you want them to be repeatable and exactly the same, which is the idea for production. So one thing you, that you should note is that a pattern is proprietary property for your brand. So you're definitely gonna want to keep track of all your patterns. Um, even if the factory or you know, a development company is making patterns for you, you're definitely going to want to be um, asked for a copy of all those because that is very essential to making your clothes. Um, so, so each pattern is unique to every garment um, and they represent how your, how your garment is going to fit and how it's going to be constructed. And you know, without them, the style can't be made. All right, so the seventh item on our checklist is tech packs. 
So what is a tech pack? A tech pack is also known as a technical design packet or specification sheets. It's a series of documents that describes in minute detail what quality standards and fit you desire for your end product. So think of it like a blueprint. It's, it's describing to the builder or the sewers what, what, um, how your product is gonna get put together. The reason why you need one is a couple reasons. It's, in a, it's an, essentially an agreement between you and the manufacturer stating what the final product should be. So there's a, there's a little diagram of one here. This is just the first page of several pages. But you know, in here it's going to say label information. It's gonna say label placement. It might say colorway information. Um, there also should be some stitching information. You know, how many stitches per inch? What stitch operation? That kind of thing. So when you deliver one to the factory, then it is, it is you stating the quality standards you want and they are accepting that tech pack and they should be adhering to it. So should you have any quality problems, which we would hope you don't, that, that this is a document you can go back to the factory and say, hey, I said this should have you know, 12 stitches per inch, you only had seven, so now my garments are falling apart that kind of thing. Um, it, it also describes all of the sizing details for every size um, in, in several different areas on the body. It describes fabric content, weight, you know, all the things we said, so you're not getting cheated on fabric, which sometimes can happen. Um, it kind of is a, a companion to the patterns. So, in order to make a garment, you need the patterns, and then the tech pack is that companion with, okay, here's the shapes you will cut out to make the garment, but now the tech pack is describing to you how are you going to put it together and what details are going to go into it, into the construction process. So there's a couple, you know, a couple different ways you can learn more about tech packs. Um, we have on our website, we have some free templates you can download. We also have some inexpensive templates with a little more information in them. The next item that is on our list, and this is actually the last item on the checklist, is a purchase order. So if you are new to business in general, um, this is a this is a um, essential way for a business to business how they do how they can do transactions so a purchase order is you stating what you want to order and then that factory once they accept that purchase order then this is this is assumed an agreement then between the two companies of what is going to be made so it's really important that you do your order in the form of a purchase order um, it is really good to get either over email or a signed document from both parties saying, yes, we both agree to this purchase, purchase agreement. It states the price, so the price can't change on you, and of course states exactly what you're expecting to be delivered. So this, along with the tech pack, is sort of that agreement with, between you and the factory. Um, so I'll just walk through it a little bit because the clothing purchase order is a is a, just a little bit more complicated than other items that don't have size or colorways. So in the example we have shirt, you know, just shirt style number looks like 10,001 um, in the colorways called blue, which would be we would have communicated to the factory what that means in a diagram. Um, and we want 25 pieces in extra extra small, extra small small, medium, and then that equals 100 total. The unit price is 1250. So the total for that line would be $1,250. It looks like we have a second colorway of the exact same style. So we put in the same style number. Um, we'd have a red colorway, and then we have 25 of each. So the same thing. And so then the total, for the 
um, purchase order is $2,500. And it's laid out very clearly for you and the factory what you're expecting at what price and um, and then you would you know form that agreement just three more things i wanted to cover if you enjoyed the webinar we're going to have more one every month till the end of the year i believe um, and then we also have more free resources on our website if you go to clothierdesignsource.com go to resources and you can see we have a bunch of free things on there. We also have some inexpensive tools to help people. Another cool thing that we've just launched is we have an academy. So if you'd like to you know, get more formal about what we're teaching you and get more in depth, we have a mini, mini academy class, which includes the class, one class to an introduction to the industry, um, pretty in depth, and then a consult, you know, one on one, one on one with you, and as many people as you want, you know, concerning your brand and products. We would discuss viability of your products and, and concerns and uh, hurdles that we think you might have, and then a tour of our facilities. So you would see our development department and our factory. We also have. A second option, which is the Four Step Academy. So that's a series of in-depth classes um, that we will do via web or in person. They're going to be scheduled and um, we'll have several participants, but you can come to our facilities to join or you can, you can you know, attend the classes via web like this. And then we have the third option, which is the most in-depth, and that is the Personalized Academy. So this option, we're going to do a series of classes and consults one-on-one um, -on -one with you during the process. So if you sign on with us to develop your product and to launch your line and for us to manufacture, we will, in this personalized academy, we'll run alongside your development and give you an in-depth class with each step and each delivery and a consult with kind of helping you make good decisions and showing you options of, of you know how you can move to the next step and and kind of walking you through the process like that so you can learn more about those on our website as well um, clothierdesignsource.com